Today's micro-genre movies all use the basic plot of Enter the Dragon, the 1973 penultimate blockbuster statement on martial arts movies as a template. Today, we're going to look at seven or eight Enter the Dragon-style movies that pay homage to the greatest martial arts movie of all time by not quite remaking it. Did I say that it is one of, if not the first, of what we now think of as the modern blockbuster? So before we jump into the movies, let's have the blockbuster conversation. When people talk about the birth of the blockbuster movie, they always mention Jaws and Star Wars. These two movies are usually the benchmark of when the modern blockbuster came to be in the 70s. I always wondered, why not Enter the Dragon? Why is it not heading that list? It came out two years earlier. It was arguably more successful, if that's how you want to measure your blockbusters. I could agree that Jaws is the better crafted movie, but Enter the Dragon's just a bigger movie, I think, in box office performance, iconography, and pop culture relevance. Regarding Jaws, Wikipedia says, it was perceived as a new cultural phenomenon. Fast-paced, exciting entertainment, inspiring interest in conversation beyond the theater, which would later be called buzz, and repeated viewings. The film is regarded as the first film of the blockbuster era and founded the blockbuster film genre. Two years later, Star Wars expanded on the success of Jaws, setting box office records and enjoying a theatrical run that lasted more than a year. Also, what Luke says about the blockbuster is a Hollywood movie that's made with a large budget and big stars. A true blockbuster is extremely popular and brings in a lot of money. Typically, a blockbuster is a fabulous summer movie that audiences line up to see the first weekend it's released. Well, nobody knew the cast of Star Wars when it came out, so no big stars there. But also from Wikipedia regarding Enter the Dragon for comparison. An American and Hong Kong co-production, it premiered in Los Angeles on the 19th of August, 1973, one month after Lee's death. The film is estimated to have grossed over 400 million US worldwide, estimated to be the equivalent of over 2 billion, adjusted for inflation as of 2022, against a budget of $850,000. Having earned more than 400 times its budget, it is one of the most profitable films of all time, as well as one of the most successful martial arts films. So how is this not the birth of the modern blockbuster in the 70s? Racist! Okay, look, I don't know if these wiki numbers can be trusted, but while Dragon made 400 million and Jaws made 475 million, Enter the Dragon's budget was less than a million, and Jaws was eight times as much. Jaws also spent almost twice as much in promoting the film to the press. Jaws had one initial theatrical release, and I believe Enter the Dragon played in multiple releases and kept making the top five box office charts into the 80s. You guys like Bruce Lee movies? I saw Enter the Dragon six times. I would put money on Enter the Dragon being more deeply ingrained into our pop culture than Jaws ever could be. So let's start putting Enter the Dragon in the conversation about what movie started the blockbuster phenomenon. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Actually, you come straight out of a comic book. Terry and the Pirates to be specific. Check out this clip with one of the producers explaining where the look of the film came from. We really needed to get some sets built if we were going to ever make the schedule. When I was a kid, I grew up with this comic strip called Terry and the Pirates. And Terry and the Pirates was about China and the Orient and the mystery and dragon ladies. It was high chroma reds, blues, golds, and it just lent itself to this project so, so closely. Oh, comic books. Is there anything you can't do? Now, check out some of the influence Enter the Dragon had on other series and movies. What the fuck are you doing? Watching the movie. What movie? That's the question, isn't it? Are we looking here at Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee on the trail of illicit narcotics? <laughs> Bullshit, Mr. Handman. Bullshit, Mr. Handyman. Mr. Handman. <laughs> Jim Kelly, Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite, Jim Kelly. Melvin, the similarities between Jim Kelly and Black Dynamite cannot be purely coincidental. Your skills are now at the point of spiritual insight. 
You hear that? I have several questions. You fucking hear that? Listen, pal. Sit down and shut your trap. Set down in my I would like to read your eye. Man, you come straight out of a comic strip. Man, you come straight out of a comic book. Man, you look like you come right out of a comic book. Look here, book. Jim Kelly. What was that? An exhibition? You need emotional, emotional content. content. Now, try again. Jim Kelly's about to drive my foot up his ass. When, when it comes, comes, I won't even know. And why is that? Because I will be too busy looking good. Tons of movies used dragon or enter the whatever in their titles. Too numerous to mention, but there were also a handful that did their version of the famous mirror sequence in the final showdown with the villain Han. Even hip-hop can take from the smorgasbord of pop culture decadence here. Dr. Dre sampled the score, specifically the track The Human Fly, and turned it into Game Over by Scarface featuring Ice Cube and Too Short. I'm giving living definition. Long as my heart's ticking, I fought and make the world listen. Video games also connect to Enter the Dragon in a big way, but we're gonna get to that towards the end of the video. But we're not just looking at pop culture influence in this video. Today I want to look at the micro genre of films that just straight up copy the entire premise of the movie. So let's do a quick rundown of what I mean. There's gonna be a competition, usually fighting on an exotic island, where the various fighters gather to get to the island by boat. Our lead character is a spy or an undercover agent trying to infiltrate some kind of underground crime syndicate. He's motivated by revenge or something personal like a loved one who was murdered. Now, just in case there's somebody watching who hasn't seen Enter the Dragon or just hasn't seen it in a really long time, let's do a quick rundown of the plot line just a little bit more detail so we're all on the same page together. First, we get our hero's introduction and he's offered the mission, which he takes because of a personal connection. In this case, it's the murder of his sister, and then we see the other competitors and their backstories and motivations. They take a junket to the island, and on board, people are betting on fighting insects, and there's almost a fight, but Bruce uses his brain and tricks the bully into taking himself out of the fight, being dragged behind the boat on this little dinghy. They get to the island and enter the great banquet hall for a welcome from the villain. The tournament starts. Our hero goes spying at night after everybody's offered concubines. He discovers a network of underground tunnels and prisoners locked away. And as the plot peaks, there's an all-out rumble. This is where we get the mirror room fight sequence between our hero and villain. Bruce gets the three claw marks across his chest but wins the day. Now, let's get to the movies. There's no way to gauge which of these examples is the most absurd between B-movie Klingons to Hollywood parodies and everything in between, so these are going to be in no particular order, except that I'm going to leave my personal favorite until the end, and I guarantee you will not be able to guess what it is. So let's do it. We're going to start with a few nods to a couple great parodies. Finishing the game always has to be mentioned when we talk about tributes to Bruce Lee. It's not really a plot copycat. Uh, it's a mockumentary, the making of Bruce Lee's Game of Death, and how they finished the film after Bruce Lee died. I always get a chuckle out of watching it. <laughs> it's an early Justin Lin, a Fast and Furious fame film, and the only reason it's even mentioned here is on this list is because of, of this parody clip of Vista Fuhrer, which has got the evil cult villain with minions and a surrogate Jim Kelly with that snake Leroy Jackson. I knew you were a snake Leroy Jackson. Yeah. That came out in 2007. Our other parody is our first micro-genre example, sort of, from 1977. Kentucky Fried Movie. Round one, fight! <laughs> John Landis made this pretty damn funny sketch comedy movie consisting of many stitched together skits. And why did I write that? That's a horrible hard sentence to say. Stitched together skits. Parodying the media, commercials, the news, movies, and at some point it just starts playing this near shot for shot spoof of Enter the Dragon called Fistful of Yen. 
It's so entertaining that you don't want to go back to the rest of Kentucky Fried Movie. And it's a funny movie overall, but Fistful of Yen really shines. So much so that Tarantino actually used to screen just this portion in his QT fests in the mid-aughts. These are the Hearts Mountains of Asia. Here, Dr. Klan has built his fortress. Klan has been connected with every sort of nefarious activity. This is Butkis, Klan's bodyguard. He is tough and ruthless. This is Kwong, Klan's chauffeur. He's rough and toothless. There are moments when you're watching this film that you almost forget you're not watching Enter the Dragon proper. Now let's enter the world of Don the Dragon Wilson. Round two, fight! So there are eight Blood Fist movies, but only in the first two does Wilson play Jake Ray. The rest are all standalone movies titled Blood Fist. The first two Blood Fists were suggested to me as a remake of Enter the Dragon, and I don't think I really agree, but I can see why someone would think so, and I will explain. In part one, we see our hero's brother killed, and then he gets trapped in a deadly tournament of fighters. We see a scene where they are fighting insects for money, he has a white friend who kind of runs his mouth and gets into trouble, plus his blonde girlfriend looks like Anna Capri from Enter the Dragon, and I guess Billy Blanks is our stand-in for Jim Kelly. In part two, he's again lured into fighting in a secret tournament held on an island by a ruthless drug lord, the cast of international fighters. Jake Ray, world light heavyweight kickboxing champion. John Jones, North American heavyweight boxing champion. Manny Rivera, pro-American judo champion. Bobby Rose, U.S. Ranger. Our lead heavy does also kill one of his minions in front of his guests to show us all how serious he is. Now what's kind of cool about these movies that you don't often see is that Wilson brings in other real fighters as the supporting cast, although it's a bit of a double-edged sword because they're also not really active. Ernest Santana, Greco Roman wrestling champion. Now how long is this gonna take and do with my proctology? Silence! But it's pretty unique that Wilson gave them credits that includes their credentials, their martial arts status, their rankings, whatever you want to call it. Recently, in DC's animated library of films, they released Batman Son of the Dragon in 2021, and honestly, based on the cover, it really felt like this was just going to be Batman meets Enter the Dragon. And actually, in the making of, on the Blu-ray, one of the producers actually says they were intentionally going for Enter the Dragon meets Big Trouble in Little China, and that sounds about right. Specifically for Big Trouble in Little China, because they have the mystical magic in the underground cult chambers, they got James Hong, so that all checks. For Enter the Dragon, what have we got? It's got Dragon in the title. It features a cast of different fighters, including Richard Dragon, who's a stand-in for Bruce Lee. Richard Dragon in DC Comics has been a bunch of different characters, none who looked like Bruce Lee until this version. Ben Turner, otherwise known in the comics as Bronze Tiger, is clearly our stand-in for Jim Kelly and is voiced by Michael Jai White, who also played Ben Turner on the TV series Arrow. They also go to an island compound and sneak around in underground tunnels. The plot isn't very similar to Enter the Dragon, but the intention is clear, and the movie is scored funky to fit the retro style of the 70s when the story is set. They even make a pretty direct nod to Bruce on the junket, tricking the loudmouth to fighting him on an island and leaving him adrift in the dinghy. This time it's just in an alley, but the homage is intentional. What's your style? Hey, slow down. My style? Chad, it's dark. You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Later. That stuff only works in the movies. Oh, I assure you, it's very real. All right, why don't you show me? I'll even let you have the first shot. Don't you think we need more room? Say I didn't warn you. Where else? Not here. That island. In there. On a beach. We can take this ball. You're about to enter a world of hurt. So I'm gonna enjoy this. Hey! Okay. 
What are you what doing? What are you doing? Hey, are you crazy? Come back here! <laughs> Somebody get the key! Oh, hey. I think it might have been more impactful if it had more emphasis on the film grain and the visual style, but instead, like most DC animated features, they all look pretty similar. This is more like a pseudo-sequel to Enter the Dragon if you swap John Saxon for Batman and, you know, Jim Kelly didn't die in the first movie. Round four, fight! So if Soul of the Dragon is Enter the Dragon with Batman, then this is Enter the Dragon with Ping Pong. Dan Fogler's first starring vehicle in 2007 was Balls of Fury. It's a fun play on Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury and title at least, but the rest of the movie is an homage to Enter the Dragon. He's approached by the FBI to infiltrate a tournament of champions to bring down an underground crime lord, except instead of martial arts, it's Ping Pong. The villain Feng is also a wayward disciple of our hero's master, similar to Han in Enter the Dragon. And we also get the banquet scene when they first arrive. They do the offering of the prostitute scene where our hero in this movie is offered only male prostitutes. And one of them is Batman, brave and the bold Batman, Dietrich Bader. Feng even gives a tour of the criminal enterprise he's running at one point. The cast is pretty stellar. We got, in addition to Fogler, we got James Hong, Christopher Walken, Aisha Tyler, Maggie Q, Terry Crews, and Robert Patrick. It also features Jason Lee, who famously played Bruce Lee in Dragon the Bruce Lee Story. You think you're good, huh, Guaylo? Well, put money where mouth is. Round five, fight. Okay, Mortal Kombat 1995. I think that this is the movie that best exemplifies this micro genre. This is the closest, I think, to a reskin of Enter the Dragon for so many reasons. I could start by pointing out the many obvious parallels. Liu Kang is Bruce Lee, Shang Tsung is Han, they go to the secret island for the underground fight competition, they get there on the junket, we spend the first bunch of scenes giving each fighter's backstory of why they're all going, Liu Kang is of course motivated personally by the death of his brother, and this takes him away from a Buddhist monastery where he lives. Hell, the first scene where Liu's brother is killed is the reciprocal scene to Bruce's sister being murdered in flashback, sort of. Sort of. I'm not sure how you can have a flashback to something you weren't there to witness, but Robin Shu saw it in a nightmare, and if it works for Freddy, then why not? Your right? brother's soul is mine. So we got all that. Now people look back at the first generations of video game adaptations, and somehow this movie from 1995 is still one of the best examples. In my opinion, it's because they stole from one of the greatest movies of all time using a template that was a proven winner and it worked. And I also think this is why no other Mortal Kombat movie or series has done as well, and there have been many now. But with Mortal Kombat, we do need to dig just a little bit deeper, because as many of you might already know, this all actually makes sense, because the initial intention of the makers of Mortal Kombat was to emulate Enter the Dragon. Liu Kang was supposed to be Bruce. Johnny is supposed to be Jean-Claude Van Damme, which is why he does the splits. Sonya Blade was modeled after action star legend Cynthia Rothrock, which is why she does that back scorpion kick signature move that she does. The entire idea of fighter games that emerged in the early 90s was largely held by two pillar franchises, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And combat being based on Enter the Dragon is a huge influence on video games. The blood code, the way they used motion capture for the fighters instead of animation, these might not have been inspired directly by Enter the Dragon, but would there have ever been a Mortal Kombat as we know it if there hadn't been an Enter the Dragon? And the video game cinematic nods to Enter the Dragon don't stop there. Round six, fight! Yeah, Mortal Kombat isn't the only video game movie to try and use elements of the basic plot structure of Enter the Dragon. Dead or Alive is a less believable Mortal Kombat, less stylistic, more in line with Charlie's Angels with Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu. This is a turn your brain off kind of movie, but it's filled with beautiful people and ridiculous action sequences. Jamie Presley, Devin Aoki, and Eric Roberts rounds out the cast. To be honest, I don't really think of Enter the Dragon when I watch this movie. Yes, it does have international fighting competition being held on an island, 
uh, compound by a lunatic. Yes, the leading lady is here to avenge her brother's murder, who happens to be a very bulky white guy like Kano or O'Hara before him. So the markers are there, but that's about it. Enter the Dragon's broad influence has kind of made these things cliched at this point, but I think the Enter the Dragon influence for this movie is actually through the video game roots. Mortal Kombat precedes DOA by a few years, so it's more likely that those threads came from Mortal Kombat than Enter the Dragon. There's also a extensive bikini beach volleyball game in the middle of the movie because there's a spin-off of DOA, a fan service volleyball cheesecake game. Now instead of looking deeper into a movie that really doesn't intend to have any depth, I'm going to share the coolest thing I learned while researching this. And I know some of you already know this probably, but be patient because I did not and I'm going to share it with everybody else now. So Dead or Alive boasts a roster of fighters that includes Ryu Hayabusa, who's been in all six games, I believe. Um, I was never a DOA fan, so it never made me think twice. But I found that he is Ryu Hayabusa of Ninja Gaiden, like original Nintendo, side-scrolling Ninja Gaiden Hayabusa. How crazy is that? Video games are not ashamed of the influence that Bruce Lee has had on their industry, specifically the fighter games. Liu Kang is intentionally similar to Bruce in Mortal Kombat. In DOA, John Lee is the character modeled after Bruce, though he didn't make it into the movie. The Street Fighter franchise has Fei Long, World Heroes has Kim Dragon, and Tekken had Martial Law, who even has the three uh, cuts across his chest. It's too bad that Bruce didn't get to live long enough to see how the fighter games kept his image alive all these decades later. Final round, fight! Okay, this is one of my all-time favorite B movies. It's got everything. It's got the worst performances, secret agents, fast cars, kung fu, the James Bond jetpack, midget warriors, uh, a cult, uh, ritual human sacrifice, black magic, voodoo, devil worship, and a vulture. <laughs> Half the dialogue is dubbed and very obviously cuts away from the faces when the characters speak. It's, it's pretty great. In regards to Enter the Dragon, it stars Jim Kelly of Enter the Dragon fame. And while the movie itself isn't a plot copycat of Enter the Dragon, it has so many nods and little bits and nibbles around the edges. There's, there's no martial arts contest on an island, but the main idea, I think, is to make Jim Kelly into an international agent of mystery, in this case, Dragon. Jim even wears the Game of Death jumpsuit, albeit in a suave burgundy with a yellow stripe. The cat wears a yellow jumpsuit on the big screen. I'm always wearing a blue one. And we get some nunchuck action. <laughs> even the opening shot of Black Samurai isn't stealing from the opening shot of Enter the Dragon, but it's still grabbing what it needs from that movie. Instead of being motivated by his brother's death, Jim instead is looking for his ex, and the flashback we get is for a love montage of his old girlfriend. It's Toki. Yeah, I know it's Toki, bud. And you are here to look for Toki Kanuma. It's Toki. Yes, yes, I know. Toki. <laughs> it's Toki. It's Toki. <laughs> somebody, somebody end this. <laughs> The villain has a private army on his compound, which is in an exotic South Asian location. The entire final cat and mouse game between Kelly and the villain Janica is in these underground tunnels, but it's effectively the Hall of Mirrors without any of the spectacle and mesmerizing visuals. It cuts together the same functionally, and it's a perfect metaphor for the difference between the two films. But beyond that, the movie veers off into its own far crazier ideas, and that's what makes this crazy freak show so entertaining. Add to that a much lower budget and quality of the film, and it's, it's delicious. If Bruce had to face down one snake, then Jim's going to face down a pile of snakes. If Bruce was going to infiltrate an underground prison via ninja rope, then Jim was going to fly off with the jetpack from Thunderball. And that's not the only trick that they got from 007.
and holding all of this together are some of the most wooden lines of dialogue ever filmed. You know how Bruce was looking for... Emotional content. No, 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 the other one. The ideal is unnatural naturalness or natural unnaturalness. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well this is straight up unnatural unnaturalness. That depends on who first. Mr. Marshall, Mr. Joe Marshall. Mr. Marshall, do you know anyone here? Yes, I know, uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> We've only just met. Where is he looking? The final fight scene is entirely dubbed. The entire conversation, all of the dialogue, and it's amazing the way they do it. They only have dialogue while you see the other person who's not talking. You won't see anybody's lips move for any of the dialogue. Also, apologies for some of the language, just a heads up, um, in case it's gonna bother anybody, it's offensive. You think you bad, huh, Bones? Come on, look at me, chump. I'm gonna jab you to death, chump. Come on, come on. Let me see what you can do, muscle man. Watch this footwork. Watch me. Watch me now. Come on, muscle man. You can't fight, sissy. Come on, sissy. Don't call me sissy. Chump, you sissy? You faggot? Get me, bones. This director, Al Adamson, is also another favorite of mine. He really deserves his own episode, from the different phases of his career to his untimely passing. There is a lot to go into, but this isn't the time for that. It veers away from Enter the Dragon, the micro-genre, and I tried really hard to keep us on topic. Okay, so that's it. That's all the Enter the Dragon movie fit for a micro-genre. If I missed any, please comment down below. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, so I'll see you again next time. See you next week. Well done.